Hi, everybody. See everyone slowly streaming in. Looking good. We've got 14 people, 17 people, 20, 23, 27. Hi, everybody. It's good to be back for day three. Uh, I missed you. I hope you all had a good sleep and you enjoyed the last previous two days of the Enable 2020 conference. I sure have learned a lot. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone back that was here over the last two days and then to those who are attending today for the first time. We've got a, a number of really good presentations today. Um, today will be more of the same as we've had over the last two days, but before I get into that, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a recap as to what you might have missed yesterday. Uh, so day two yesterday was Let's Talk Tech, uh, focused on the tools and technologies that remove barriers for persons with disabilities. Uh, Deputy Minister of Public Service Accessibility, Yasmin LaRoche, kicked things off by highlighting the importance of accessibility and progress and innovation being made in the Government of Canada to support citing updated policies, new strategies, and resources available for people with disabilities. Uh, Deputy Minister LaRoche explored how the pandemic is a unique situation that has caused everyone to face many of the same barriers, uh, and with uh, of same barriers people with disabilities encounter on a daily basis. Uh, the pandemic has forced us to get creative and to put a greater focus on universal and inclusive accessibility. She concluded her welcome with a thought-provoking message on the current situation surrounding the death of George Floyd, uh, reiterating that we must be kind to one another, we must listen, and we must learn. Afterwards, our panel discussion on assistive and adaptive technologies, moderated by Dr. Adrian Chan and Professor Mojitaba Mahdi of the Carlton Faculty of Engineering, led panel discussions that included an esteemed collection of doctors and professors from CHEO. We had some from Bruyere, University of Ottawa, Queens, and Carlton, and focused on the latest development and leading edge projects impacting the ever evolving state of assistive technology. Afterwards, Kyle Phillips, General Manager of the Americas of AI Media, closed out the day with a discussion and overview about making content accessible one word at a time. He covered some of the services AI Media offers, some of which we may be using right now, like the subtitles, transcription, and described videos of late, ASL, and LSQ. He discussed how these services work and provided examples of who is using AI Media globally. Today, we'll continue to build upon that relevant and insightful content. But before I turn the floor over to introduction and welcome today's speaker, I'd like to remind everyone that all mics and cameras are off and the Zoom platform does require we try to pay close adherence to time. So I'll be playing policeman as always. We will mo host a moderated Q&A at the end of today's panel discussion. Captioning in English and French is available. I will be sharing the links with you shortly. And now without any further preamble, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Dean Melway, who is the special advisor to read and chair of our wonderful event this year. Dean, take it away. Thank you, John. And it's great to see the numbers rising. We're up to 90 now, and uh, hopefully we'll be a little higher by the time our star attraction comes onto the screen. Uh, it's tough for me in two minutes to introduce Mike Gifford. Uh, for us at Carleton, he's been a great friend. He's been involved with uh, Enabled since the first year we did it, five years ago. He's uh, also uh, joined CAN, which is a new Canadian accessibility network that Carleton has formed. So his organization is uh, in on the ground floor. And I like to think of him as the uh, apostle of open source. So that's my that's my handle for, for Mike. But uh, my description of him is that if you don't know what's going on, here's a guy you can call. The, the other guy sitting monitoring this whole thing is the other tech wizard, uh, John Moore, who between the two of them, I don't need to know a lot because they know it all, they really do. And uh, Mike has a, a fantastic newsletter. So uh, if you, uh, hopefully Mike at some point in this, you'll have that up, that up on the screen for people to, uh, to, to join in and, and it really is very informative and so much information available. But to the, to the man himself, it's my great pleasure to introduce Mike Gifford. Take it away, Mike. Thank you very much, Dean. Uh, it's great to be here again and, and uh, I've really enjoyed the, uh, 
the, the opportunities to go off and to, to bring people to, 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 to meet with people and engage with people uh, through Enable Ottawa and through Carlton in general. I think there's, there's, there's so much opportunity um, through this, this movement um, to, to try and, and learn from each other. Um, so so I, I, I firmly believe um, that we, the topic of my talk is great communities build strong accessibility. And, and so I'm gonna be talking about community. Um, and for those of you who, who are, are sight impaired, most of the slides that, that I'm gonna be going through are, are people and friends that are, um, are, are, are part of the digital community that, that has helped me learn how to, to, to understand and appreciate accessibility and to, to also contribute to the, the digital community that, that digital communities that I'm part of. Um, so I, uh, in terms of roles that I play, I am the, the owner of a, of a web development business called Open Concept. And, uh, and that is, is a, uh, uh, we, we develop largely uh, Drupal websites. Um, I'm also um, spearheading the accessibility efforts in that Drupal community. I founded a couple of groups as well. I founded uh, or co-founded uh, Aliyao, which is uh, an Ottawa community, accessibility community that's, that's organized a number of events around GAD and, and, and other things. Um, also uh, Drupal Ottawa and Civic Tech Ottawa. So um, I, I do think that community and bringing people together uh, to learn and to share information is really quite important. Um, so now I want to go off and, and, um, and share, uh, share some of my, my, uh, um, my slides um, and, and get into the presentation. So I'm going to just jump into to that. And hopefully everyone can see that nicely. Um, and uh, Dean, thanks again for your, your reminder about the, the newsletter. If I had, uh, I really should have gone off and created a nice little short URL for people to go off and to, to follow, but I'll make sure to, uh, to include the, the link to our newsletter in, um, in the, the, uh, the follow-up material for, for uh, Enable Ottawa people. Um, so here's some, 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 some ways to sort of, um, here's some of the journey that have gone on around accessibility. So I started uh, looking at, at uh, uh, Drupal and, and looking at ways to go off and, and, and get involved with digital accessibility, um, well, largely because I thought this was going to be an easy thing to fix. I thought that I could um, sort of take this open source tool, modify a few little things, and then suddenly have a, an accessible system that, that we could just use and, and, and uh, um, begin working with governments and, and, and universities and, and, and other, other people who who care about, about accessibility. Um, little did I know after uh, over, well, over 12 years of working on this that, that, uh, that we have now far more issues than we were aware of and, and, and initially and that, there's, there's, um, that we're making uh, some great ground, but it's, it's, um, it's something that has taken a lot of time and involved a whole lot of people. Hundreds of people have been involved in, in, in addressing and, and improving um, the, the, the Drupal accessibility issue queue. Um, so in here we've got uh, Everett Zufeld, who was the, the first Drupal accessibility maintainer, and also John Folio, and, uh, and it's, it's, uh, you know, this is at a, a Drupal conference that I was at. Um, and so let's go on to the next slide. Um, I also wouldn't be able to do, to do this without friends. Um, and with, with, friends are definitely part of, of my community and getting to know and, and engage with people who, who have, um, a lived experience of disability is something that's, that's really quite important. And, and Al's been a, a terrific a mentor to me and to help me understand more of, of the, the disability rights uh, community and, and more of, of uh, a, 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 I guess, a, a more mature way to go off and understand the struggle, the disability rights struggle. And in this case, he's, uh, Al's showing me how to go off and use his eye tracker. And uh, in case you're curious, I'm, I'm really, really bad at using an eye tracker. When I tried to do it, it was terribly funny. But uh, you know, it's, it, it's uh, interesting to go off and see how people who can master it, how quickly they can go off and, and navigate through, uh, through the web. Um, so another, another um, event I wanted to, to talk on was this, the, the first Ali Yao conference. So um, there's a bunch of people here um, who were, were, were present at the city of Ottawa. This is a talk that David McDonald was giving. Um, and you can see other people there like Robin Gallipo and Eric. Uh, um, and uh, it, it, was, um, it was a first opportunity. This is back in 2011 uh, when we were um, just trying to, to evaluate this. And, and 
Um, and I wanted to go off and I'd done a lot of work with Drupal 7 to go off and improve Drupal 7's accessibility, but I wanted to actually test it out with real users. And I figured, what a, what is, is there a better way to do this and to actually bring people together and organize a conference site and to, to, to see that there are, um, there are more people who could, could evaluate it and see where I could, what else I could learn from and what else I could do to improve the, the, the Drupal um, content management system. So um, I was inspired by uh, Jenison Ascension and Denis Boudreau, um, who, who were both um, you know, active in trying to go off and to start an accessibility unconference community. Um, and and it, was, was, uh, um, it was wonderful to go off and to, to be part of that early on and to be, uh, be able to go off and engage with people um, in Toronto and Quebec City and Montreal and Tokyo. Um, and to, to really you know, feel like I was able to both um, learn from directly from, from some really amazing leaders, um, but also to be able to be part of that community, be part of, of, a, of a, um, a group of people who are, are, are working collectively in order to go off and make, make things better and to, to learn and to share best practices and to, to be open about, about where the, the best approach is to deal with the web. Um, so that conference was a, the first one and it was, um, it was a great initiative to try and get, get things moving in Ottawa and to, to build, um, to have a volunteer um, initiative to try and, and build awareness around, around uh, digital accessibility. So this is an, another uh, event organized by the, the, uh, the Aliel group. And uh, you can see Michael Cooper here speaking and presenting to a, 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 a broad audience. And, and uh, um, you can see uh, Rabab and, and others in this, this, uh, in this session. And, and um, you know, Joe Devon and, and, um, and Jenison Ascension, who both started this, this uh, great initiative called Global Accessibility Awareness Day that, that just was, was last week or the week before. Um, but it's a, a terrific opportunity where people around the world are getting together and, and thinking and, and working around ways to go off and to, to, um, to improve accessibility. And, and there are so many talks available and so many um, opportunities to go off and, and to, to learn through Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Um, it was, was impressive this year to see how Microsoft and Facebook and, and others had really taken this opportunity to, to to launch um, accessibility initiatives on a global stage um, by, by leveraging the, the, um, um, this time period for, for Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Um, I think Amazon went off and actually extended it and made it Global Accessibility Awareness Month because there's definitely so much more that can be done. Um, but again, it was a, a great initiative to bring people together and to, to, to have an opportunity to learn and to talk. And it would be great to be able to, to be back together and, and to be able to, to be in this close space together, um, crammed in a room again. This has been such a long time since, since we could comfortably go off and be, be together like this. So it's definitely nice to see, nice to see people um, engage this way. Um, so another area that, that the Drupal community is, has worked on is, is working with, with sprints. Um, so in this case, this is a, um, in Montreal at the Evolving Web Offices and uh, um, you can see uh, Lee Hunter and Arthur and others um, who are um, part partaking in this and taking time to out of their 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 days to 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 volunteer and to to work on accessibility issues as part of, of core and to try and improve issues in the issue queue and and again it's 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 um it's a great way to actually get to know people better and to um, to work on a project together and get to learn about an issue and to be able to talk with each other um, about challenges and, and to, to work with that, that um, both the physical community of people who are getting together as well as that, that virtual community. So, you know, many of the people who are involved in these, these physical events are also connected electronically and, and we're able to go off and, and to, to maintain that, that um, that relationship between between those times when we're able to meet together in person, and then then the the larger issues when we're actually um, engaging over 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 a longer where we're where we're engaging remotely um, through the the, the technology. Um, I wanted to highlight CSUN, which is um, an amazing um, an amazing event, and unfortunately this this past year it was was. Uh, um, it was really quite affected by the the, uh, um, the coronavirus, but uh, 
but there were people like Rabab who were able to to make it to the the event and, and come back with some stories and, and there were there was a, um, a a conference that was uh, was organized um, that that was was um, um, right afterwards um, so so um, yeah, it, it was there was a, a conference of the, 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 the speeches that were canceled that were, were was made on available online, and uh, so you can watch some of the presentations that would have been given at CSUN, um, but but were um, were weren't able to be, to 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 be presented because of, of all of the the worries about the pandemic. Um, so in this this uh, um, slide we have have Peter Korn and Sharon Rush and Wendy Chisholm. Um, so, uh, and, you know, people from Amazon, Millability, and, and Microsoft who are, are looking in this case about trying to, to look at, at men mentorship and eldering in the accessibility community. How do we try and pass along what was known? And, and this, this group is, is uh, well, not everyone here, but some of the people here are, are still engaged in trying to go off and, and to, to build a, a momentum in Wikipedia to try and, and to, to improve Wikipedia so that there is better documentation about what was done um, historically to go off and improve web accessibility, but also to, to remember those people who contributed so much, whether it's, it's um, um, the, the uh, you know, people who invented screen readers or whether it's, it's the, um, the people who are involved in, in fighting for, uh, for, for seeing accessibility as a human right. Um, there's, there's a lot of people who are, are not mentioned or not maintained in our, our public history or not acknowledged as, as, as having the impact and notoriety that they, they really deserve. And, and this is a, a group that's trying to go off and to, to, to keep track of that and build a, a memory of that, that virtual community uh, for, for those people who have, have really played a large role in trying to shape the, the, uh, the accessibility space. Um, so Aliyao Socials are another big one. <clears throat> and so you can see some people here, we're at the, uh, the Three Brewers, I think at this particular time and have a number of people from, from government and private sector and, and uh, who are, are, are eager to go off and to share with each other and talk informally about, about accessibility issues and to, to learn from each other and, and to, to, to help um, see that there, there is a, um, a, a, an opportunity to go off and know each other uh, socially as well as to know people um, you know, in a, a uh, you know, as well as knowing each other socially, we need to know each other, you know, in technology and be able to engage with each other, you know, online. Like having that that opportunity to meet with each other has really helped build a, a community of people in in Ottawa who are are communicating with each other um, even through the pandemic in other ways. Um, so, for me, there was also an element of of looking at at. Um, at other events. Um, so this is Tiffany Z uh, presenting at uh, Drupal Camp Ottawa. And uh, she was presenting about her experiences on building accessible uh, experiences, particularly in Shopify. Um, but she was quite involved in the, the, uh, the Drupal community for a while at, with, with the, the team at Cold Front Labs. And uh, they, they uh, do a lot of work with the government. And so she was, was as a front end person, learned a lot about accessibility in that space and definitely was, was an advocate for it. Um, but it's it's a uh, you know again when you're when when you're going to events and there there um, a lot of the Drupal events have it's common to have accessibility as one of the features as one of the the talks and 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 I've been spearheading it for a long time but there are so many other people who have have played and who are pushing it forward in other ways and, and uh, um, again seeing seeing the people who have that um, that that thought uh, thought leadership and who are are, are able to uh, to engage um, with, with um, yeah, in, engage with the community and, and to, to, to push for different elements of accessibility and, and to, to really see that, 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 uh, that there are, are many people pushing on the same problem and who are working and, and championing for progress in this area. Um, so uh, Terza, uh, I can't pronounce your last name, Sir Quint, sorry, um, asked um, if, we could, if we could tell her what Drupal is again, and, and, and Drupal is a content management system. It's, it's a, it, just, it, we've, it, it can do a lot of different things, but largely it builds websites. So uh, we built websites for the Governor General, for Amnesty International um, with it. Uh, the Prime Minister site uses it, so does the Queen, so does um, you know, so many, it drives about 3% of the web is run through, through the Drupal content management system. And it's a, it's a framework that has <clears throat> tried to, to, to um, 
build an, an open by uh, sorry an accessible by default framework and it's, it's open source so people who, who are interested can can download it and use and modify and distribute it um, it's also something that that is used uh, quite quite extensively by um, by people who are um, in in the government and, and in the education sector places where accessibility is quite important um, and it's it's useful because um, the the we we work to try and, and make the um, the back end accessible as well as the front end so people with disabilities are able to go off and get involved in in creating the content and editing the content and administering the websites and not simply using the front end interface um, and um, Melanie asked whether or not open concept employs disabled people um, and I can say we're we're a small team of five and at the moment. I don't think we have any people with disabilities on staff. Uh, we have employed people with disabilities in the past. Everett Zufeld, who I will put in an earlier slide, was one of the, the, um, um, was one of the first uh, accessibility maintainers in the Drupal community. Um, he was, was, uh, was blind and, and uh, it was really a, a great honor to, to work with him and to, to learn how to go off and engage with him as a, as a person with a disability and how to support him uh, in being the really amazing developer that he has, has become. Um, so I'm going to just jump on to the, uh, the next slide now. So we have a um, accessibility action newsletter um, that we'd like people to sign up to. And, and, and we, we started this, um, I think it was a lot in October, and, and we, we realized that there was a need to try and build community around accessibility, especially digital accessibility, that there wasn't, there wasn't really a solid sense of community outside of events like Aliao. There are a lot of people who did accessibility and had accessibility as one of the things that they were responsible for in their job description in various different um, organizations, particularly government departments. But there wasn't a, um, a space for them to learn and to share what is happening in the, in, on the web. So, um, so I, I set up a newsletter, the Accessibility Action Newsletter, that, that, that uh, um, you can find from our website that has a lot of information on it on a monthly basis about, about, the, uh, about things that are happening in accessibility. And it might be things uh, like uh, if, if Yuta Traverius is, is, uh, um, is talking about, uh, about any of the work that she's doing around supporting the, the fringe and, and, and development for the fringe. Um, um, this is her speaking at the Forward 50 conference a couple years back. Um, or it could be the things, that, uh, different toolkits that are released by um, Microsoft or Expedia or whoever to, to try and, 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 and identify best practices and make web accessibility easier. Um, so this here is, is Neil Milliken, who's uh, the accessibility uh, coordinator or, or, or um, the, the uh, chief accessibility officer at ATOS. Um, and uh, I, I met him, uh, I engaged with him online uh, through Twitter for a long time. Uh, and this is the, the first time that we met in person at the ALETO conference. Um, and it was, uh, uh, it was great to actually, you know, when you, when you see people and you, you've had a chance to exchange with them uh, digitally, but then have an opportunity to, to meet with them in person, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite, quite a lot of fun. And, and uh, uh, this is the, the, uh, you know, our first meeting here. Um, Slack is another interesting opportunity to try and build community. Um, the, uh, for those people who are, are interested in, in digital accessibility, Ali Slackers is a is a, a, a Slack link that you can uh, or Slack group you can be part of and, and join onto. Um, there's also uh, accessibility groups in uh, or in in, in um, WordPress and Drupal, and those are both also great places to go off and um, learn about uh, about accessibility and especially how to apply them uh, apply accessibility best practices in a particular um, content management system. So this is Rian Wrightbelt in uh, their, their Rotterdam offices at the, uh, the level, at the level level offices in Rotterdam. And she's actually wearing an Alley Cats t-shirt, which is again, it's a, a meme that was developed by uh, um, Carrie Fisher uh, to try and, and, and raise awareness about accessibility. And, and again, this is another community building effort where people show up at different conferences and, and are wearing their Alley Cats t-shirts. And, and uh, it's, uh, it was, was great to go off and, and to present with, with Rian. Uh, at this at this particular event, um, there's other things that are done through Twitter as well. This is this is a, an access chat uh, um, as a, as a as a hashtag, and uh, Deborah Rue and Neil, Mil Neil Milliken and others are able to to uh, to bring together a really interesting series of conversations 
um, and videos uh, through Twitter, and, and and they do this on a weekly basis, and it's it's quite quite amazing to go off and to see the the uh, the kinds of discussions that they're able to have through Twitter, really using that forum and medium in a really constructive way to try and bring people together around around that that particular hashtag. Um, in this this is a slide from M the M Enabling Conference, and you can see that uh, Francis West and David Baines are also part of that. Uh, both of them have contributed some, some great work. Francis has uh, written a book called Authentic Conclusion, and, and David Baines has a, has a really amazing newsletter that I think comes out weekly, which is really ambitious. Um, so um, the anonymous at attendee has said, what sort of accessibility tools are available within Slack? Is it a good pl platform in that regard? So Slack is, is Slack a good tool for accessibility? Um, I would say that it's not, it's okay, but it's not great. Um, and they've they've um yeah i think that that like with so many proprietary tools if there isn't an open issue queue that allows you to go off and to report issues and to to, to see what progress is made on accessibility over time um it's a real challenge because it, it may be that that uh the, that an update goes off and breaks what what how you use the the site um and and so i i think that there's there's really mixed results as to whether or not slack is is a a great space for that um, that being said, if you join the Alley Slackers discussion group, you can you can actually have more conversations with other people who are concerned about the accessibility of Slack on Slack. Um, so again, that's a, that's a worthwhile thing to to look at. Um, I'm a big advocate of using open source tools, as Dean mentioned earlier. And there's uh, Riot um, and Rocket Chat are two different alternatives. And the difference with an open source solution is that you can actually get involved in it. You can um, you can actually work on and post accessibility problems and engage with with um, people who have some technical knowledge in order to go off and to to improve those 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 issues you can help help come to a conclusion or a resolution around accessibility problems um, with an open source tool more more easily than you can a proprietary tool um, so this is uh, Jana uh, presenting on or Jania presenting at the the open open government summit um, I had to have something about National Accessibility Awareness Week, and I didn't have a, a really good slide, but uh, Jenny is presenting here, um, and actually with Yasmin LaRoche and others um, at the, the uh, um, at this Open Government Summit. And, and uh, again, it was a great opportunity to, to, to meet with her and, and to, um, and David Cooper, sorry, not David Cooper, Michael Cooper and, and, and others looking at, at uh, accessibility and ways to, to, to try and, and, and work with that. Um, uh, we're also involved in a community initiative called the the We for Authors uh, cluster, and this is organized through um, a group in in uh, in, um, in, uh, in Sweden called uh, Funka. And the the idea is you've got a, a lot of authoring tools that 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 come with them with a lot of uh, accessibility challenges in them, <clears throat> and um, and it was uh, um, yeah we, we, we if you bring together the accessibility um, accessibility or the, these offering tools and the, the people who are building these offering tools and look at best practices for for authors to improve the, the experience for authors then there's a lot that can be done to uh, to help contribute that or to help make that better and so it's been interesting engaging with people with um, clone and site vision and uh, typo 3 uh, sorry not typo 3 um, uh, tiny MCE uh, trying to to uh, to think about ways of of improving the authoring experience, and so so we're happy to be part of that community of, of people that are engaging with the European Commission to try and improve accessibility uh, of the tools. Um, back to Drupal, um, the uh, again other people coming forward with with uh, initiatives, and and uh, I was really excited to go off and see that that Drupal 9.1 will come with the. Uh, a theme that's built with accessibility in mind. It's the Olivero theme, and it's it's uh, actually um, named in recognition of, of Rachel Olivero, who who died, I think, just last year, a few months after this this uh, photo was taken. And Rachel's not the woman in green at the front, but the woman in red in the back. And, and it's uh, I unfortunately um, don't have an in focus picture of her uh, from from that that uh, that last conference I I saw her at. Um, but, but again, recognizing people with disabilities as part of, of the community and really honoring the contributions they make is something that, that is really quite important. And I was very happy to see that, that, uh, that the Drupal community had done that. Um, this is another instance for Drupal. This is, this is the, um, 
Jacob uh, Rockowitz, who, um, who took what we, we did with Drupal Core and decided to go one step better. So the Drupal Web Forms module is a really excellent, ama amazing example of what every, every uh, open source software, every, every piece of software should have. I mean, it's got accessibility testing built into it. It's done uh, a really amazing job of prioritizing accessibility so that those issues are addressed quickly. And, and to work with an issue queue and work with people who contribute to that issue queue to see that, that it's, it's really embracing the accessibility best practices um, that are available and, and helping, all, helping everyone who's using these tools do that in a responsible way. Um, this is um, Alistair Duggan, um, who was, uh, this was just right after he showed me through the, uh, the uh, UK's uh, uh, government digital services offices and, and looking at their empathy wall. Alistair uh, took me to the, the Alley, uh, Alley London event, um, which was a, a meetup to, 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 again, to talk about accessibility issues. And, uh, and, and I wanted to, to remind people that, that by, by doing things in the open, we can make things better. And this is a slogan of, of the GDS as part of their, their digital services uh, platform. Um, but, but again, it, it so applies to accessibility where, where we need to collaborate. This is such a huge problem. And we, we, there's so many different ways to go off and address digital accessibility. We can't expect that we have the expertise in our team to take care of it ourselves. We have to go off and, and reach out and engage with others and be open to criticism and be open to learn from each other on how to make things better. And if we make things open, it will be that much easier. Um, I couldn't go off and, and not, okay, couldn't talk about accessibility, or sorry, talk about community without it, talking about Enable Ottawa. Uh, and here's Yasmin LaRoche speaking um, at, at a previous event and, and uh, again it was um, lovely to be, be hosted by Carlton and, and have an opportunity to go off and to uh, exchange with people there. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, GitHub and, and, uh, and GitLab as well, these online communities that, that uh, are so, that are, that are really quite vibrant and that, that are bringing people together. Um, this is uh, Andrew Olson, who, who has uh, created some, some great code uh, to, to help make it easier to make online events more accessible. Um, and he's uh, using tools like, like uh, the auto captioning tools that, that Google allows. And it's, it's not going to be as good as what AI media provides. But if you're having small breakout groups, or you're having informal sessions, if you're having other ways to try and build community, it's really amazing to see what you can do and how you can engage that, whether that's in a a VR space or whether that's in in some other context. So if you're if you're able to go off and to uh, take advantage of, of some of the, the amazing tools that are out there and, and, and make it easier um, and give people less excuses to go off and to 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 to, to I mean everyone should be able to include um, some level of captioning in the services they provide with the tools that are provided by by these these other uh, other services. Um, I've got a photo here of, of uh, uh, Juliana Rothwell and uh, Rabab Gama, and uh, um, you know the, the text on the slide is: "If you want to go far, go together." And this is uh, an old African proverb, proverb, but but it's it's you know we, we really do need to go off and see this as a journey. We have to see this as a as something that that we're working on, and and that we're as Juliana has said that we're we're making sure that our that we're more accessible today than we were yesterday. And, and how do we try and make sure that we're engaging with people with disabilities and, and engaging with, with accessibility experts and, and doing what we can to, to see that, that this is a journey that we can work on collectively um, over the many years and decades that we have to go off and, and build a, a digital presence that, that is, is, uh, is, is able to, um, to meet the, the uh, um, yeah, to, to meet our goals of, a, of an inclusive society. And, and with that, um, I have ready for any other questions that people might happen to have. Um, if you're not able to answer them here, you can always reach out to me on Twitter. Um, and I, I will try and, and uh, um, tweet my slide deck. Uh, if people would like to look at it more closely, I can, I can tweet that out after the session. Um, but, but happy to, uh, to, to ask, answer any other questions that people might have. Thanks, Mike. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions in the queue. I don't see any. We've been doing a pretty good job of answering as they come up, which is not common to some of the previous sessions we've had. Uh, uh, so, uh, 
somebody asked about uh, or mentioned that that uh, Google Voice text is now built into Google Meet, and that's absolutely true. But it's also um, part of of uh, Microsoft's uh, um, presentation as well. So our Microsoft slide presentation or PowerPoint includes that as well. So um, on Office three hundred and sixty. And Kathy just wrote, um, <laughs> thank you very much, Kathy. Uh, I do hope that, that uh, you know, it, it was a lot of information. Hopefully this is something that, that uh, there, there wasn't a lot of text in the, 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 the slides, but hopefully it's something that, that is, is uh, the hashtags and the, the links in the slides that I tweet out, it will be, be useful for, for helping you going ahead. Great. Well. If there are uh, if there are no other questions, um, I'd like to thank Mike for his uh, for his presentation today, and uh, looking forward to continuing this conversation on Twitter. He seems to be quite active on the platform, so uh, let's uh, let's continue this conversation because that's really what today is all about. Today is all about um, about building a community, and it's really important that the type of uh, of uh, energy that we are building throughout this three-day conference continues afterwards. So often uh, with, with events like this, there's a, there's a great sort of spur of activity uh, during the conference or during the event, and then once it's over, you sort of lose that momentum. And I, I think that's, again, that's the, that's the focus of today is to sort of uh, look forwards and to innovate and to continue this conversation. So as always, uh, thanks again for, uh, for attending. We're going to be taking a brief 10-minute uh, uh, break uh, today, uh, and we'll be back um, for uh, 10 to 3 for our next uh, presenter, who is Max Bro, uh, VP of Video Canada. So thanks again, Mike, and um, we will see you all in about 10 minutes. Okay, thanks. Bye, everybody.